right, in this video, we are going to cover this chapter 16 worksheet on chemical equilibrium and the equilibrium constants. And this worksheet mainly focuses on the relationship between equilibrium constants when you manipulate different equations. So let's get started. Uh, for the first one, we have uh, what is the equilibrium constant for K1? And if we have this reaction, so we have a gaseous reaction of carbon monoxide plus hydrogen gas equals uh, methanol gas. So basically this would be K1 is going to equal the products over the reactants. And keep in mind, you have to balance this too, because it's not balanced as it is. So CO is carbon is one carbon on the left, one carbon on the right. Oxygen, there's one and one, but hydrogen, there is two here and four on the right. So you need to put a two as the coefficient for H2. So this means our K1 is going to be the concentration of the products, which is CH3OH, divided by the concentrations of the reactants to their coefficient. So for H2, it would be the concentration of H2 squared. So then we're going to do the same thing for 1B, which asks for the equilibrium constant K2 for this reaction, which happens to be the opposite reaction as, the, as 1A. So we can just have K2 is going to equal the new products, which is H2 squared times CO over the new reactants, which was the old product, so CH3OH. And 1C will ask us, what is the relationship between the two equilibrium constants, K1 and K2? <coughs> and as you can see, they're inverses of each other. So we can say, and one way of writing it is that K1 is going to equal 1 over K2. And this is true for every reversible reaction that the equilibrium constant in one direction is the inverse of the equilibrium constant of the opposite direction. That's very important to know. So if you flip an equation, you can take the rate, or you can take the equilibrium constant and do the inverse of it, one over the equilibrium constant to get the new one. And that leads us to 1D. In general, if you reverse a reaction, what is the value of the new equilibrium constant? So in general, let's say we have A plus B has a reversible reaction with C plus D. Our equilibrium constant to start out with is going to be called K, and you'll have concentration of C times D over A times B. And then if you were to do the inverse, so I'll put K forward, meaning the forward reaction, and K backwards, which would be the reverse, would be the inverse of that. So it would be 1 over kf. So that's one way you can think about it. Then for 1e, if you if reversing the equation can be thought of as multiplying it by negative 1, how would you express the relationship between k1 and k2 mathematically? Now, in this case, for equilibrium, reversing a reaction does not mean multiplying the equilibrium constant by negative one. That was true for um, Hess's law for the enthalpy of formation, but that's not true. But it's saying that just if this was true, what would it be? And simply it would be K1 equals negative K2. So I don't really like this question, but I mean, it's just conceptual just to get you acclimated with the algebra that's going on here. All right, let's move on to 1F. Write the equilibrium expression for K3 now that we have this new equation. And if you look at the first equation, which is the CO plus the 2H2O plus CH3OH. And then this reaction, which is in 1F, it's double. So the initial reaction is double. And again, this is still not balanced because now you have eight hydrogens on the right and, you're sp and you have only four on the left. So this needs to be a four. That would be the balanced react. That would be a new balanced reaction. But this reaction will be double of the first reaction. So what we can do is we can first write an equilibrium expression for K3, which is what they ask, which is simply the same products over reactants ratio, CH3OH. This would be squared now, divided by CO squared times H2 to the new coefficient of 4. Now, we want to relate K3 to K1 mathematically. So to get from K3 to K1, meaning, or from K1 to K3, 
the first reaction to this multiplied by two reaction. That's exactly what we did. We multiplied the equation by two. But unlike Hess's law and things that we learned back in, in Chem 1, for the equilibrium constants, if you multiply an equation by two, the equilibrium constant of the new reaction gets squared. So it gets put to that power that you multiply it by. So now our equilibrium constant K3 in relation to K1 would be K3 equals K1 squared because we're multiplying K1 equation by two. So that means we have to take K1 squared to get to K3. So that would be the mathematical expression. Let's move on to 2A. Given the following reaction and equilibrium concentrations, what is the value for Kc? All right, now Kc, remember, it has to do with equilibrium constant for concentrations. So for gases, we also can have Kp. But in this case, we're dealing with Kc. Now, also in equilibrium, we do not count pure substances. We only count substances that can have either a partial pressure or a concentration, meaning it's in a solution. There's a solute and a solvent. That is the only way to figure out concentration. So for pure liquids like H2O liquid and pure solids, like you see here, I2 solid and S solid, we do not include these in the equilibrium expression because they don't have concentrations. That's why they're not mentioned in the problem. So very important to take a look at the equation. If you think you're missing information, Look at the states, that'll probably give you a hint. So we can figure out and solve for Kc. It would simply just be Hi squared over the concentration of H2S, which you have both of those. So Hi, well, we gotta make sure it's balanced. Let me double check. Yeah, it looks balanced to me. Then Hi squared, Hi is 0 0.3. So 0 0.3 squared divided by 0 0.7. So this would be 0 0.129. And moving on to 2B. <clears throat> if you were to reverse the previous reaction, what would the Kc value be? So again, if we're reversing, we'll call this one, we'll call it Kc2. So the new reaction, meaning reversing it, means we're taking it to the negative one power or we are flipping it. So it would be, or the inverse it would be equal to one over 0 0.129 now that we have a number. And this is gonna equal our new constant of 8.20. That would be our Kc2 of the reverse reaction. Now 3a. So 3a was pretty complicated. So in 3a, calculate the equilibrium constant for one half B2 plus E equals D given these two equations. So we can take a look at, you can pause the video now and try to do this one on your own before I get started, but I'll just go right into it. If you notice that there is two things that are in common between these both equations, both of these equations, we'll call this equation one and equation two. Equation one and equation two both have three A and they have two E. Nope, sorry, and they have two C. Now, the goal here, if you remember back in Hess's law, is we want to come up with the, and in this case, this holds true for both, we want to come up with this final equation, K equivalent. So this means our equation only has B, E, and D. It does not have A and C. We see an opportunity here where if we were to manipulate these equations correctly, we can cancel out 3A with 3A and 2C with 2C. But if you look in both equations one and two, 3A is on the reactant side and 2C is on the product side. So what we can do is we need to flip one of these to make them cancel out. And the smart move would be to flip the second one because if we see B2 and D, two things that we need, they are in the correct they are in the correct spaces. They are in the correct places for the reaction, the final reaction. We have B2 in the reactants and D is in the product. So if we flip the second equation, it will help us out tremendously. So we'll call this one two prime. So we can call this two prime, two C plus two E yields three A. And this equilibrium constant, now that we flipped it, it's now going to be one over 5.5 .5 times 10 to the third. 
So that's what happens if we flip it. Okay, so now we have this flipped equation and now we can look at equation one and two prime and we can see that if we add them up, what happens? 2C cancels with 2C and 3A cancels with 3A. So we can add them up. So I'll write this new equation here of them added up. So I'll write one plus two prime and that's gonna equal B2, right? Cause that's left plus two E cause that's also remaining yields two D cause that's also remaining. Okay. And the equilibrium constant associated with the addition of equation one and two prime has to be remember the equivalent, the equilibrium constants multiplied together. So when you're adding reactions in equilibrium, the equilibrium constants that of the new equilibrium constant is the product of the two old equilibrium constants. So this means we're taking our equilibrium constant from equation one and multiplying it by the equilibrium constant of equation two prime. So I'm going to write that down over here. I'll write K, I'll call it K three for this, for this reaction, we'll call this one K three and it'll be 1.65 times 10 to the negative fourth times one over 5.5 times 10 to the third. So we're not going to do this right now. We'll just write the expression. Then the next step is we want to compare our final product equation, what we're looking for to what we have, because we're very close. And as you can see, the, Final equation is one half of what we have now for the expression K3. So what we need to do to get from this new equation that we have, this K3 equation, to our final KEQ, it's going to be K3 equation multiplied by one half. But instead of multiplying by one half, we take the equilibrium constant to the power that we multiply it by. So it would be two, the one half power. So K3 to the one half or the square root equals the square root of K3. So all we need to do is take the square root of this entire expression. And I will calculate that now. It is, and this equals 1.73 times 10 to the negative fourth. Okay, moving on. We have for the following balance equation, which is here, what is KP at 100 degrees Celsius? First calculate delta N for the reaction. Now delta N is simply the products in the, or the coefficient of the products in the gas reaction minus the coefficients of the reactants added together. So the coefficients of the products here in this balanced reaction is one and minus the coefficient of the reactants, which is one plus two, which is three. So our delta N is negative two. So now our reaction to go from KC to KP is KP equals KC times RT to the delta N. Now in this case, our R constant, since we're dealing with pressure, an ATM most likely, or a ratio of pressures in our KP, our R is gonna be our ideal gas constant 0.08 two, zero, six. So now we can plug in this information to figure out KP. So this is going to equal KC, which we know 0 0.491 times R 0 0.08206 times T. Oops, I need to get rid of that parenthesis times our temperature, which is hundred degrees Celsius, but in Kelvin, it's 373 to the negative one half. And this is going to equal 5.2 times 10 to the negative four. And I, I think I said to negative one half, to negative two, I meant. Okay, now for the last one, number five, we're doing a ice chart. I love ice charts. All right, so in the reaction below, a mixture of 0.1 molar NO, 0.05 molar N, or H2, and 0.1 molar H2O was allowed to reach equilibrium. Initially, there was no N2. 
At equilibrium, the concentration of N2 is 0 0.02. Calculate Kc. All right. So this is a gaseous reaction, but we're asked to calculate Kc based on concentrations. So initially, we, are, we have values. For NO, it's 0 0.1. So 0 0.1. For H2, it is 0 0.05. For N2, it's 0. And for H2O, it's 0 0.1. Now, for these questions, if it doesn't say what the products were, we assume they're zero. If it usually it says a certain amount of reactant one and reactant two were added to a beaker initially, or they were initially added, or they were initially mixed, that means at time zero, the concentration of the products were zero. But in this case, we're being given explicit information on one of the products, so we can put that there. So our change. Now, since it's a reactant for these two, NO and H2, they will be losing some of their concentration in corresponding to their coefficient. So minus 2x here and minus 2x here. Then our N2 will be gaining, so plus x. And then our 2H2O will be gaining as well, plus 2x. So our equilibrium for NO, for NO is going to be 0 0.1 minus 2x. For H2, 0 0.05 minus 2x. For N2, x. For H2O, 0 0.1 plus 2x. So now we're being given that our equilibrium concentration for N2 is 0 0.2, or 0 0.02. So now we know 0 0.02, and look at that. Our equilibrium concentration for N2 is just x. So we know that 0 0.02 equals x. How nice of them. So now we can write our e expression for Kc. Now Kc is going to equal the following general expression, and then we can plug in our values from there. It would be H2O squared times N2 over our reactants, which is NO squared times h 2 squared. So now we can plug in our value of x into all of this and solve for our Kc. And I'm not going to do the entire math. I'm feeling lazy, but you guys can do it on your own. But I will write the expression for you. <clears throat> so for H2, we have 0.1 plus 2x. So we know, we know x is 0 0.02. So 2x is 0 0.04. 0 0.1 plus 0 0.04 is 0 0.14. This is going to be squared. <clears throat> then for N2, we simply just have x. So it will be 0 0.02 over NO. So NO is going to be 0 0.1 minus 2x. 2 times 0 0.02 is 0 0.04. 0 0.1 minus 0 0.04 is 0 0.06. And this would be squared times the concentration at equilibrium of H2, which would be 0 0.05 minus 2x. And again, 2x is 0 0.04. So we have 0 0.01 squared would be our equilibrium concentration of H2. So you can solve this expression on your own, and you should get a number, hopefully. OK, so that's it for this video. Hopefully, you learned a little bit about equilibrium constants. There will be another video for the second worksheet having to do with equilibrium, and you can feel free to comment any questions you may have. Thank you and subscribe.